Mm -hmm. And um, today our speaker is Professor Alexander Ivanov with the uh, talk Asymptotic Properties of Least Way Estimation for Short Signal Parameters. Please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is uh, these are joint result our joint results with um, uh, my first year PhD student Victor Gladun. He is present here in the seminar. And um, let's begin. Setting of the problem. Uh, an important generalization of classical trigonometric model in statistics of stochastic processes and signal processing are models of frequency modulated sinusoidal signals. Observed against the background of random noises having different nature. The most studied here is the case of linearly frequency modulated signal, signals, which we will re refer to as chirp signals, signal. This is a picture describing the form of this signal. And uh, for one harmonic, it can be written as, um, it's written in formula one. Uh, the main complication is the presence of uh, the quadratic terms under the sign of trig trigonometric functions. Um, in this in this uh, model, A and B are amplitudes. Uh, phi is a starting frequency, and psi is so called the chirp rate. This is a model of a linearly modulated signal. Uh, phi is initial frequency, and if we write uh, uh, phi t multiplied by one plus some parameter uh, multiplied by t, it will be exactly the li linear, linear duration of the initial frequency. For discrete time t uh, and random noise being a linear time series, a lot of result on consistency and asymptotic normality of the least square estimator and some other estimates of our chirp signal, uh, which is one harmonic or the sum of harmonics, one of the type one can be obtained in a large number of works, mainly by Indian statisticians. See, for example, the recent review by Kundu and Nandi uh, were uh, a lot of uh, uh, recent papers, and not recent papers on the subject um, are located. Here we consider a uh, time continuous multiple chirp signal observed with additive strongly dependent and weakly dependent random noise and prove strong consistency and asymptotic normality of unknown signal parameters. Uh, suppose we observe a stochastic process two where the signal or we can say using st statistical terminolo terminology regression function, three of such a kind, this is a sum of N capital um, harmonics of the type one and uh, theta zero, uh, this is unknown vector parameter we have to estimate by observation of this additive sum of the signal, signal, signal and random noise epsilon t. Uh, um, it is supposed that uh, epsilon t 
is a stochastic process defined uh, on a probability space, omega fp, and certifying the next assumption, a1. Um, epsilon is a sa sample continuous stationary Gaussian process with zero mean and covariance function b of t having one of the properties. The first one, i, uh, it corresponds to mm, strong dependence of this, of this process. Uh, covariance function is equal to some slowly varying at infinity functions L, uh, non-decreasing slowly varying at infinity function L multiplied by T to the power minus alpha. Alpha is some parameter from the open interval zero one. And the second condition uh, be just integrable function on real line, real axis. Uh, assuming that the true values of amplitudes are different numbers, true values of phi, uh, j0 and psi, j0 are different positive numbers. We arrange the chirp rates psi zero in increasing order and suppose that the true vector of uh, chirp rate, rates is located in is located in this set psi capital. In turn, we introduce also the parametric set phi capital um, where all the initial frequencies are locate, lo located. And then we consider a monotonically non-decreasing -dec family of open sets, psi t from this parameter, uh, parametric, parametrical set psi capital containing uh, all of them, uh, uh, yeah contain vector psi zero and uh, the, the closure of the union of this uh, set of parametric sets uh, consigns with the closure of um, uh, the initial set psi uh, uh, and this set psi t um, have the following properties that are uh, presented here as condition b the first one uh, we have such a relation where um, coordinates psi j, j and psi j plus one of these sets. Now, this is condition of parameter dis distinguishability. And the second assumption of this kind, this is the condition of uh, separability separability of the first chirp rate from zero. Definition one, uh, any Andrew random- Is n fixed capital N? Yes, this is the sum of harmonics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but time is different and, and these um, sets, are, sets depends on, on T. Absolutely, absolutely. This this is um, uh, you see to um, um, cover the case when the true values of parameters are located to close one to another. Um, we have uh, and the first and the first chip rate 
too close to zero, we are forced well, we to prohibit use... them. Yes. Uh, we we should... prohibit close close values, but if t is large, we we allow some closeness. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. we, we allow it. This is uh, to um, in our problem in in our setting setting of the problem, we. Um, uh, consider the is estimator, the estimate, uh, which is defined on the parametric set depending on T. It's not, uh, it's unusual, but uh, to simplify the situation, to make uh, this parametric set fixed, we have to consider a rougher definition of the initial parametric sets, a rougher definition, then it will, it will not be necessary to consider such a setting, such a definition, such definition of parametric sets. Uh, now we uh, give uh, definition one. Any random vector such that it's a point on the function of any random vector five such that it, it is a point of the functional six absolute minimum of the parametric set uh, from the space R4N where amplitudes can take any values and param parameters phi and psi take values in this in this set in the written in the last row of this page is called least square squares estimate of the parameter theta zero. So we study just such an estimate, namely. Uh, Theta t is defined on the parametric set theta t closure depending on t. This is the answer on, on your question, Professor Pilipenko. It's written, it is written on the, on the slide number seven. Um, the first main result of the presentation is the following. Uh, Sam Vladimir, before you start to formulate these results, let me ask you, uh, why do we know that absolute uh, minima is achieved on the set theta t? It's, it, it's uh, achieved. Uh, um, it is achieved. Can, uh, yes, can... I can explain. Mm -hmm. Param parameters uh, phi and psi are located in the compact sets. This is... This is the first. So the it was first. Like, like open set. Uh, I mean, um, or, or, no. or here you say closure, closure, yes. In, in the closure, in, in mm -hmm. the closure. Okay. Mm -hmm. And okay. amplitudes yeah. are linear parameters, uh, and uh, the, the minimum Before, is achieved. Mm -hmm. In uh, mm -hmm. is achieved. Therefore, it's. Uh, um, usually, um, in in different problem of statistical est estimation, it is necessary to prove that such a minimum exists. There are a lot of very strong theorem on the on this matter. For example, the classical theorem uh, by uh, Joachim Panzagel, of the, he, he proved a very strong theorem. Uh, about 50 years ago, uh, and from this theorem, it follows the existence of all, of, of all the estimates that are considered uh, practically in statistics, in statistics. Uh, but uh, another problem, as far as I remember, the setting is, uh, uh, the framework is that we have to uh, find the uh, random a version, so we have to find measurable version, which is yes, it, it is proved that this absolute, absolute yeah. minimum is a measurable. This is so called theorem of measurable choice, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So, so there are some uh, there are some which, uh, very, very developed uh, machinery uh, mm -hmm. that um, provides the existence of this estimate estimates and their measurability. Okay, thank you. Uh, the first main result of the presentation is the following, theorem one. Let the conditions A1 and B be satisfied. Then, least square estimate of theta t is a strongly consistent estimate in the, of the parameter theta zero in the sense uh, that amplit amplitude tends to true values of amplitudes, and uh, this is enhanced in, it enhanced property of strong consistency, not only uh, psi t tends to psi zero and uh, phi t tends to phi zero and psi t tends to psi zero, but multiplied by some factor uh, here we multiplied by t and here by t squared. It's a very strong consistency. <laughs> strong consistency, this is convergence almost surely. Uh, and here we have almost surely con convergence uh, of such um, the values, the difference between estimate and true values of parameters, parameter multiplied by power of t. The length of the interval of observation. One auxiliary fact, which is also of independent mathematical interest, plays important role in the proof of theorem one. This uh, result is, is we, we Call uniform law of large numbers. Theorem two. Under condition A1, the relation seven holds. Uh, the random variable psi t, which is equal to a uniform norm of such a function depending of parameters phi and psi tends to zero almost surely. Below we sketch the proof of the convergence seven. Step one, we take uh, this modu module under the sign of supremum and consider square, uh, square of this model and obtain such an expression. In order to obtain to obtain a major rent independent of the parameters uh, uh, phi and um, psi, we arrive at the non-trivial inequality. Eight. Mm. Expectation of, of psi t squared of psi t squared is less than or equal of such an expression where we have two square roots, two square roots and the product of eight values, expectation of the product of eight values at different points of our random noise epsilon. What is psi? This integral, this double integral. So, uh, psi, no, psi is uh, a oh, random so. variable uh, written in the formulation of theorem two. But but uh, there is supremum here. This is supremum, but we we write an inequality that does not depend on parameter. Oh. Because the exponent is, uh... it's difficult. It's difficult to 
destroy these parameters. It's difficult. And we did it with the help of such an inequality, with such an inequality. This inequality is true. I hope so. <laughs> Um, so do, 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 do you use just boundedness of exponent or some properties that this is exponent no, of we, the... we make some change of variables in the integral and mm -hmm. due to, the, to this uh, change of variables we um, eliminate known parameters psi, uh, phi and psi. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And uh, uh, I'm sorry, the I have a question. So just removing exponential doesn't work. Why does it, it work? Because it's hard to understand for me. So it's bounded by one, this exponential in the original expression. Mm -hmm. But then it's it's bounded by one, but it stands under the sign of integral. Mm -hmm. And we can't take uh, absolute value of epsilon. Mm -hmm. This is a problem. Mm -hmm. If we write here the absolute value of epsilon, uh, such a average will not um, yeah, converge to, to zero will not converge to zero. This is it a will real... not converge to zero almost surely. In probability, probably yes. No. Ah, no. It will, it ah, will if converge you write to, it, values, to a const, mm -hmm. to a yes, constant, yes, to some constant, to the expectation of epsilon at zero, absolute value of epsilon at zero, it will converge. Think... It's not so simple problem. To eliminate, to eliminate uh, these parameters under the sign of integrals. Therefore, we are forced to use uh, relatively complicated uh, transformations. Okay, may I continue? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have the inequality eight and step two. The first estimation of the right-hand side of eight for further estimation, we use condition A1 and apply a Serle theorem to the product of eight values of the stationary Gaussian process epsilon. Uh, I, uh, Serle theorem, in fact, is a partial case of uh, Leonov Shiryaev Leonov formula for Gaussian processes. We uh, can write down the expectation of the product of eight values of Gaussian random process as seven double factorial. This is equal to 105 uh, summons in the formula nine, uh, where the terms BR uh, can be relatively easily calculated. And in fact, not all of them depends on all the variables U, V, and T minus S. Uh, it's really not so difficult uh, to find in this 105 summons. It's possible for several hours to find all of them. From uh, formulas eight and nine, under condition A1i, we obtain, we continue the inequality eight and use the inequality nine, equality nine, we obtain the inequality 10. And now we obtain for our supremum uh, expectation of supremum squared. We obtain such a sum uh, 
given by formula 10. And then we, uh, uh, it's possible to estimate properly every sum until this sum. It's not so difficult. Uh, step three, any BR is a product of four values of covariance function and we bound three of them by B0 to estimate then a corresponding integral of the fourth value using condition A1i. This approach coarsens the inequalities but makes it easier to write down the answer. In final analysis, for any positive delta and sufficiently large t, we arrive at the inequality 11. This expectation is less than some constant. This constant can't be simple, can't be simple, with such a constant, uh, and uh, multiplied by the value of our covariance function um, to the power one fourth. On the force. Uh, this is for condition A1i. And similarly, uh, under condition A1i, I, this is a case when we deal with integrable covariance function. Um, we obtain uh, another inequality of such a kind of such a kind. This constant can't be simple as well because of complication of uh, the, in fact, this is a com quite complicated to, to write down these inequalities. And uh, we obtain a final analysis that this uh, Expectation is is uh, has a power has a order t to the power s minus one fourth. Mm -hmm. Step four, using the relation eleven and twelve, we arrive in the standard way at, at convergence seven in the formulation of theorem one. In the formulation of theorem one. Uh, in the formulations of theorem two, my but theorem two. Uh, uh, Sam Vladimir, uh, before, before we go to, to the next theorem, let me ask you about this Isere theorem again. Uh, can you show us again the uh, light where you, you use it? You just get the expectation of the product of four uh, jointly Hausian random variables. So there is Dinkin formula. I think that it is the same, no? Uh, it's um, uh, um, what is the this theorem uh, has such a name uh, because um, no. Uh, this mathematician, by the way, he 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 is, was from Ukraine. He lived in Bogoslav town of Kiev district, and uh, in fact, he obtained the formula for uh, the expectation of the product of four values of Gaussian process. And mm -hmm. generalization of this formula <clears throat> is called the, as well, the Serle theorem. And this terminology is used in the in the first chapter of the Gichman Skorohod book, Introduction to the Series to the theory of random process, the first edition of uh, 1965. In the first chapter, uh, Skorohot and Gichman uh, call this theorem a Serlis theorem. No, Therefore, okay, I... okay, uh, okay, but 
uh, as, as I think that is uh, just partial case of well, uh, well known in the form. Yes, we know. Yes, uh, so, yes. Uh, so is, this is, is maybe due to its application in the uh, theory of random process. Maybe it has a different name. Uh, uh, okay, and uh, uh, okay. This I uh, just uh, wanted to to understand uh, the difference in terminology, but the result is of course the same. Thank you. I I treat this formula as a partial case of uh, leonov sharyaev formula. Uh, leonov sharyaev worked with uh, semi invariance uh, for not only uh, for Gaussian case, but uh, Gaussian not calculation. for Gaussian, but for for Gaussian case. Yes, uh, yes. The, the moment uh, the moment of uh, eighth order can be presented uh, as a sum of semivariants and uh, the semivariants of order two uh, they consign to is the value of covariance function yes yes exactly okay thank you so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It it, it uh, should be written uh, theorem two here. Sketch of the proof of theorem one, the consistency. Consider a system, uh, part one. Consider a system of linear equations for um, least square estimate of amplitudes, which is subsystem of the system of normal equations for least square estimate of theta t. And we write it in more detail in the form setin. In more detail, it can be written as system of linear equations uh, for AJT and BJT of such a kind. Um, and then if we will use in, in Satine the following notation, the following notation to write shorter formulas, then the coefficients of system Satine can be rewritten in, in this form, in this form, and um, let us denote by O, uh, low case O T one, these are possibly different stochastic process such that they tends to zero almost surely as T tends to infinity. Using condition B, condition of distinct, distinguishability of parameters, uh, it can be shown that for uh, all the indices J and P, uh, these coefficients A and B uh, have a very simple structure. They are equal or they mm, converge to zero almost surely, or they equal to one half plus something that converge to zero. This is the, the formula 14. The following simple statement helps to do this. But we use such a simple lemma. It's really simple uh, statement. Let's alpha t and b t be some functions, and b t tends to plus infinity as t tends to infinity. Then we have the relation fifteen. We have the relations t fifteen. The proof of this lemma uses the properties of Fresnel integrals 16. Use the properties of Fresnel integrals 16. But using this notation, this is important notation, 17 and 18, we consider here the difference between estim estimates and uh, true values of parameters. Uh, condition B and CRM 2, uh, the uniform law of large numbers, for the, the constant terms of this system of linear equations, 
for the constant term C, uh, we obtain uh, their relations 19 and 20. They are of such a, uh, we can re rewrite them in such a way, in such a way where XPT and YPT are given by formula 17 and 18. And uh, applying some previous um, formula, we can rewrite the least square estimates of uh, amplitudes in the form 21. Uh, they depend this uh, they depend on the true values of parameters but it doesn't matter because now we uh, try to prove the consistency and uh, dependence on the true values of parameter it's um, uh, do not interfere to move further uh, and uh, was, uh, these values xit and yit are less than y one by absolute values and therefore we obtain the useful inequalities uh, 22 and what next part two of the proof of this theorem. We introduce such a function, gt of theta one, theta two, of such a kind, this non-negative function, non-negative function. And from least square estimated theta t definition, uh, we have such an inequality. This is the place where we use that theta t is uh, the least square esti squares estimate. We have such an inequality. Because, because the value of our functional of, of least square functional at the point theta t is less than than the value of this functional in any other po uh, parametric point. And uh, we can rewrite this difference in a, such a form. And by theorem two, and inequality is 22, it's not so difficult to prove that the second summand tends to zero almost surely as t tends to infinity. And we, uh, it's not necessary to consider this term further. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, what is the- uh, May I ask the question? Please. <clears throat> so in 23, theta, theta sub t is random, but in your theorem two, you have supreme over all phi and psi. And so do you use the, the, this part here? Yes? Yes, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's written by theorem two, mm -hmm. by theorem two. By the theorem of supreme two. over all values. Pra okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks. This expression is less than supreme by parameter. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we need in uniform law of large number <laughs> to prove that this tends to zero. And uh, uh, this tends to zero. This is less than or equal to zero, almost surely. And this is uh, a non-negative non -negative function. It means that um, this function, this function uh, GT of theta one, theta two, tends to zero 
almost surely as t tends to infinity, the relation 24. And uh, using such a notation, using such a notation, technical notation, we can rewrite this function in the form of these two sums. And from lemma one, condition B in, in previous inequalities, we find that the second sum in 25 is uh, value o, 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 low case O T of one tends to zero almost surely. And uh, on the other hand, we can rewrite we can rewrite this integral in such a simple form, and then we are going to substitute in this expression we go uh, the value of our uh, estimates ajt and bjt obtained here on such these expressions. If we substitute these expressions. And after some uh, transformations, we um, obtain such a relation on uh, this function, this the first term, the first term, the, sec the second term, term tends to zero almost surely. And the first sum, can be rewritten in the in the form in in this form in in this form, and uh, it will be tends to zero almost surely as t tends to infinity. What does it mean? Uh, we suppose that uh, this sum of squares is positive. Because if, if the sum of squares is equal to zero, there is no such a sum in, in, in the sum of these harmonics in the beginning, in, in the signal. Therefore, from 27, it follows that uh, we have <clears throat> n relations of such a kind. Of such a kind, uh, x j t squared plus y j t squared tends to one almost surely. Part three, introducing the notation lambda j t is equal to this these expressions. We can uh, rewrite our values xjt and yjt in this form and let omega zero be uh, the random event or probability one for which 28 is valid. If for any elementary event omega locus omega, from omega zero behaves uh, in such a way, then 20, the relation 28 is true by Lebesgue majorized convergence theorem. Uh, assume that this relation is not true for some uh, elementary events, omega zero from omega capital zero. Um, and below, we consider uh, all the possible cases when SETI is not true for some omega low case omega zero from omega capital zero. Altogether, there are five uh, such options. And then we prove for options uh, from one to five, the relation 31, the relation 31. This sum of squares 
does not um, tends does not tend to one. It means it means that this is all the proofs of this relation. It means that together with twenty seven, together with with twenty seven, where is twenty seven? Together with twenty seven, it means that uh, we have the relation thirty six. This is part of our theorem on consistency, and from the previous formulas. Uh, it follows also that the amplitudes tends to the true values of parameters as well. Such a, such a complicated proof of the consistency. The detailed proof of theorem one and theorem two one can find is in our paper with Victor Gladboon, recent paper. Um, this paper was published in Austrian Journal of Statistics less than one year ago, recently, it was published recently. I have, I have uh, about 10 minutes more. Um, I would like to say several words about the symptotic normality of the least square estimator. To prove asymptotic normality of this, of this estimate uh, in consideration, we need to introduce additional assumption regarding the stochastic process epsilon, uh, condition A2. The process epsilon that satisfies the condition A1i has a spectral density of this kind where uh, L wave is a slowly varying at infinity function. And uh, alpha is the same as in condition A1i from interval zero, open interval zero, one. And uh, one more condition, F has a force spectral moment. The similar, the similar condition uh, we uh, introduced for spectral density of the process and epsilon that satisfies the condition A12. Uh, condition. Uh, may I ask one more question? So condition A1i was um, alpha between zero and one. Is it correct? Yes. But if alpha between zero and one is f of Lambda, ah. This is a, a strong dependence. This, this, is, it, it, this is asymptotics at zero, not at infinity, but at zero. At zero, yes, ah, okay. mm -hmm. absolutely. This is a, such a spectral density. This is the case of a strong dependence. Spectral density at zero isn't integrable, but at zero is equal to infinity is equal to infinity. Thanks. The spectral density of the process uh, uh, has a four spectral moment. And, and we give an example of the fulfillment of the condition, of this condition. It's not so trivial. This is uh, such an example. Uh, this is so-called Bessel covariance function of such a kind. This function satisfy, satisfies the, the condition A1i and the spectral density of epsilon is of, the, of such a form where k nu z is a modified Bessel function of the second kind of what they knew. And uh, at zero, it behaves as uh, we need uh, in. Uh, we suppose here, and uh, when lambda tends to infinity, 
we have such an asymptotic, uh, we have a, a factor uh, e to the power of minus lambda. It means that the spectral density has all the spectral moments, not only four spectral moments, all the spectral moments. Therefore, this um, condition is not on the empty set of spectral densities. Uh, it fulfills sometimes. I uh, introduce further block diagonal matrix D T consisting of N blocks and each block in turn is a diagonal matrix DT. And uh, <clears throat> we formulate, let's formulate the next theorem. Let the condition A1, A2 and B be fulfilled. Then the Norton least square estimate, square estimate of such a kind, tag, uh, set eight, uh, this, is, this is a vector um, set eight, is asymptotically as t tends to infinity, is normal and uh, zero w, where w is a singular matrix described below. It's not a strict formulation of the theorem because this is presentation, not a paper. Um, uh, this matrix is described below and the complete formulation and proof of this theorem can be found in the paper, uh, our paper is with Victor Gladun and uh, mm -hmm. A symptotic normality of the least square estimator for chirp signal parameter in modern stochastic sear and applications. Uh, this paper will appear uh, and it, it has uh, it, it, it is present in the internet already, the text of this paper. Below, we give a sketch of the proof of CRM3, but I have no enough time. I have to explain, mm, we use a standard approach that was used uh, by Ronald Fisher, uh, perhaps about 100 year, years ago to prove asymptotic normality of the maximum likelihood estimate. Uh, estimates, we use the same approach, but what is a complication? The complication is that we consider such, a, uh, such an equation, uh, such an equation. This is uh, uh, Taylor-like expansion. It's not a Taylor expansion because there is no such a thing as vector Taylor expansion. This Taylor-like expansion, um, we can uh, write down this expansion in a such a form because uh, this is um, QT prime of theta of t, this is system of normal equations. Therefore, it's equal to zero. Then we have, in fact, we have the relation. This expression, this uh, vector is equal to this matrix of the second derivatives in some intermediate points in every row multiplied by this difference. And uh, we normalized by this matrix, diagonal matrix D, uh, this equation. And we prove that this matrix uh, tends to some constant matrix. And then as usual, we prove that this, uh, this is a Gaussian vector uh, normalized by this di diagonal matrix 
dt and usually uh, this uh, vector converge, con converges to uh, some Gaussian vector, but not in this case, not in this case. It appears that to obtain the asymptotic normality, we, we really, we can prove that this uh, vector tends to some matrix with such a, a normalization. But here, if we uh, will consider, uh, would consider such uh, an expression, it will tends to zero, at least, at least uh, in uh, mean square sense. Therefore, we have to normalize one one more time this uh, term to avoid such a situation. And this additional normalization uh, is a, a, an origin uh, of such an effect, the limiting matrix of this normal distribution is uh, singular. Uh, this normal distribution is singular. And uh, this is I, uh, I, um, uh, this is a drawback of such an approach, but uh, this is quite accurate mathematical result, mathematical result. I skip it. I have no time to explain. Uh, and uh, I only explain what uh, uh, what is the form of the limit limiting um, um, covariance matrix. Uh, the limiting covariance matrix. Uh, this is a uh, matrix with square blocks of order four. Uh, the matrices R, A, L, and R, M transposed are of this kind. They are written ex explicitly. And R, L, M uh, is a covariance matrix of such a kind where every, every element of this matrix is a quite complicated integral where the spectral density of this process appears. And the functions mu here are quite complicated and they are expressed via Fresnel integrals. And uh, on this page, you can observe this expression, this complicated expression for the limiting um, covariance matrix. And uh, uh, we can formulate two corollaries. The first one, under this condition, A1, A2, and B for any delta from zero, one, uh, these values tends to zero in probability. This result continue the theorem on consistency, but without this uh, mul uh, multiplier t to power one minus uh, uh, this multiplier without without. Uh, multiply t to the power of one minus delta. Um, they tense with probability one, but all surely. Uh, and they tends to zero in probability when we multiply uh, by t to the power of one minus delta. The first corollary and the second corollary I am not happy. I, I am not happy 
with its corollary, but this is a this is really a real real fact. If uh, some matrix has rank two n, then rank of w w u is equal to two n. It means uh, w is a matrix of order is a quadratic matrix is a square matrix of order 4n and it's a uh, rank of this matrix matrix is equal to 2n we obtain here the essential singularity when try to prove the asymptotic normality uh, thank you for your attention Thank you very much uh, for interesting talk. And uh, maybe somebody have questions or comments, please. I have one small question. So uh, there, there was a theorem one when, where you get um, strong law of large numbers, but the proof was hidden. Is there any hope to get similar theorem if you have a polynomial not of the second order but polynomial of the third order yes uh, in fact this is this uh, uh, kind of uh, proof uh, we can prove we can prove in uh, for for for, for any polynomial with unknown coefficients, uniformly in these coefficients, if we write down um, uh, complex exponent uh, e, yeah, to the power i multiplied by some polynomials and uniform uh, of, of any finite finite order and is um, coefficients and then we consider the supremum by this all these coefficients and uh, we will we can prove we can prove that we it will be ends to zero the uniform law of, of large numbers however technically it's very difficult because uh, the number of terms in this serless relations this is um more than 105 <laughs> more essentially more but uh from the viewpoint of uh, uh this this kind of inequalities can be obtained for all in the mouse as well. Thank you. Okay, some other questions, please. I also uh, have, a, uh, have a question and uh, I have to say that it is a very interesting subject, uh, subject uh, very interesting statistical model, at least theoretically, because uh, from one side, it uh, allows such a powerful uh, statement like this uniform law of large numbers. By the way, it seems to me that due to uh, this statement is uh, so powerful, you uh, have a degenerate matrix is uh, asymptotic normality. Uh, this is actually uh, my question. Uh, am I right? This is the reason. Mm -hmm. You you may be still a uh, small fluctuation of uh, uh, parameters by such uh, using this uh, law of large numbers. Yeah? Yes. Okay, uh, and uh, the next question is the following, uh, because I am not uh, a specialist in this subject. Uh, can you just uh, give us an, ex an example where uh, in uh, physics or in some other applications such interesting statistical uh, object arise? The linear modulated signal is applied in radars. <laughs> uh, during, but, uh, during, during 50 or 60 years. 
I, re, I remember uh, this, uh, but uh, for me it, it always looks like uh, we just uh, have uh, different uh, mm, uh, frequencies and frequencies were fixed. Uh, I didn't know didn't know that uh, the frequency is uh, changing and uh, that uh, uh, linearly changing. This this is new for me. Okay, thank you. Uh, let, let me explain a little bit. What the model we uh, that is considered in this talk and by Indian uh, statisticians, it's not an accurate um, physical model that mm -hmm. is used in applications as uh, uh, image pr processing or in radar systems. The duration of the chirp signal is finite. In this this model, this just approximation, we consider the duration of this chirp uh, signal uh, um, e is equal to infinity. So yeah. it's not uh, mm -hmm. it's not uh, an exact physical picture, uh, but okay. uh, it's, it seems to me that if we uh, will consider um, accurate physical picture and try to 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 find some, uh, cl consider classical set of estimation and uh, to prove classical properties of these estimators uh, we most probably we will fail Yes, you're right. So we have to always make compromise between uh, yeah, physical and uh, mathematical uh, <laughs> realization. Okay, uh, thank you very much for interesting talk. Uh, hope that you will be uh, will visit our seminar with frequency which increase uh, exactly as in this talk. And uh, this is the uh, end of our session for today. And maybe, Georgi, do you know who will be the next speaker? Uh, of course, because it will be me. Oh, very good. OK, uh, then uh, we will see you next week. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.